well, if it's if it's ever been true, it's true now that the mind can only absorb what the behind can endure. So I think there's uh, virtue in the rest of us being brief. So here's what we'll do. I'll introduce myself, tell you just a few things about me and two or three things about um, what I want to accomplish as a state senator. My name is Richard Raines. I'm the county commissioner of Lowndes County. I represent Hay Hire in the north end of the county. Um, and I am running for the state senate. Um, I'm a father of five kids. I have a wife, um, attend Cross Point Church, um, small business owner, um, avid outdoorsman, and uh, really, when I when I think about when I think about what we're doing, you know, the reason we're here is because we're interested. Most of you that are in this room are either here because you want to try to. Well, most of us are trying to convince you to vote for us, but you know, you're here because. Out of all the races, maybe there's a race that you're still undecided about. And I'm the same way. You know, I have a ballot printed out at the house, and, and I'm not decided on all of the races. And one of the things that, that I'm a little tired of is I'm tired of going to vote and not having any options when I vote. I, I'm, I'm a little disgruntled in that sometimes I have to elect people that I don't even really agree with because I don't have any choices. So I'll tell you how I got from the County Commission to, to this stage. In 2010 when I ran uh, for the Board of Commissioners there were six people on the ballot. There were four of us that were campaigning and two qualified and then said no never mind we'll do something else. But there were six people on the ballot and um, when I ran for the County Commission in 2010 I promised a small group of Republicans that if elected I would not seek a second term on the county commission. It's something I felt in my heart um, that was the right thing to do. It was the right thing for me. And, and everyone that, that loved me and, and knew me advised me not to say that. Because according to some of my best friends, what if you decide to run again? And I answered, well, I won't because I said that I won't. And so um, I, I won the primary, won the general election. And in January of this year, um, I announced that I would not uh, seek a second term on the Board of Commissioners because I said that I would not seek a second term on the Board of Commissioners. And um, the Ballast of the Times did a very nice write-up, uh, editorial about it, Reigns, Promise Kept. And my wife and I, we, we met that news with, you know, we were, we were happy about the editorial, but at the same time we were a little, we were a little sad because what, what has happened to us when someone who is in public office actually does what they say they're going to do, we're surprised by that. Now that's a sad state of affairs, but um, I kept my word and I thought I was done with politics for a little while. And in February, uh, some local Republicans approached me and asked me to consider running against Tim Golden for the state senate, to which I immediately said, no, uh, I'm fine. I've got five kids at home and I've got a business that I'm running, I'm fine. And, uh, but they said, will you pray about it? So my wife and I agreed that we would pray about it, and we spent three days uh, praying about this decision and both felt um, that this was something that I was supposed to do. So on Friday, February the 28th, I announced that I was running against Tim Golden for the state senate, and then that following Sunday he announced he was retiring from the state senate. So um, that, that kind of brought us to where we are today. But, but here, are the, here are the reasons that, that I'm running. I, I want to be the candidate that I can vote for. So when I go, I'm going to vote for myself, right? I, I'll at least get one vote, so we'll see how it all turns out on election night, but I'm going to at least get one. Hope I get two. That means my wife voted for me as well. So, but I want to be the kind of candidate that I could vote for. And so I think about what are the things that are important to me. Well, one of the things that's important to me is ethics. I think that we should hold our elected officials to a higher standard. I think that we should expect our elected officials to do what they say they're going to do. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for integrity, I'm looking for leadership, and I'm looking for people that keep their word and do what they say they're going to do. And I hope that you know me well enough to know that I will keep my word, even if we disagree. Now listen, I love my wife more than any other human being on the planet, and sometimes my wife and I disagree. Most of those cases I'm wrong. Sometimes we disagree. But we still love each other and we'll still, we're still married. So sometimes we're going to disagree as family members. Uh, those of us in Lowndes County, the, the north end of the county, the, 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 the best part of Lowndes County to live. We're, we're going to disagree sometimes, but what, when you look at me as a candidate, I want you to say, well, he keeps his word and he's a leader. 
So ethics is important to me. And I think that we have to do something to get the, the negative influence out of politics. So I made you a promise in 2010 and said I wouldn't run for a second term and I kept my promise. Well, the promise I'm making to you today is, is two promises. Number one, in terms of lobbyists, I will not accept any gifts, tickets, trips, meals of any kind from any lobbyist the entire time I serve in the state senate. I will talk to anyone that represents any industry across the board. If they want to talk to me about legislation, my door is open and I'll meet with anyone. I'll go out to dinner with anyone, but I can pay for my own meal. And if I want to go see a Braves game, I'll take my kids. So no incentives, no tickets, no trips. The second promise I'm making to you is that I won't serve more than eight years. And why do you say eight years? Well, number one, I think that eight years is a good time to get things done. I also think eight years is a good time for for someone with new ideas to come in. So I think that what we should start expecting from our elected officials is that our elected officials have enough integrity to impose term limits on themselves. So I won't accept anything from any lobbyists in eight years, so that's my promise to you. So the other two issues that are important to me is the economy. We need jobs in South Georgia. I have five children. I have my oldest is 15, my youngest is eight. and We've reached a point with our South Georgia economy where our children have to make a decision. If they want to do better than us, better than their parents, then a lot of our kids are left with just a couple of opportunities. One is join the military. Now, I have a 14-year-old son that's talking about joining the military, but I don't want my son to join the military because he doesn't have any other options. Or move away. And we're losing our young people, guys, because we don't have jobs here. Now, Georgia's done a really good job of creating jobs over the last few years. We're number nine right now in the country in terms of economic outlook. We're above Texas, we're above Florida, we're above Tennessee. We're doing a good job, but I don't need to tell you that uh, just from November to March, the middle of March, the last time I looked at the numbers, there have been about 3,000 new jobs created in the state of Georgia. Anybody want to take a guess that hadn't heard this stump speech before on how many of those new jobs came to South Georgia? 200. I think we can do better. We've got more land, we've got a better quality of life, uh, we have more natural resources, our graduation rates are higher than the state average, and we need an advocate in the state senate that's willing to bring jobs to South Georgia so that our children have options here. So the economy is important to me. The second thing that's important to me is health care. I'm the president and CEO of a health, uh, health services company. Um, I know how to create jobs. In 2012, I uh, approached my business partner and said, I've got an idea for a company. And he and I sat down and created the company that, that I'm the president and the CEO of. He's the chief medical officer of the company. He's a physician. And we built this company and we built our medical services. And for six months, uh, the only thing we had was a loan from Guardian Bank to build this business on. And for six months, we tried to convince people to, to accept our model of healthcare services. We signed our very first contract in January of 2013. Well, between January 2013 and January 2014, um, we created 11 new full-time jobs in South Georgia. So I know how to create jobs. But I also understand health care. Out of all the issues facing voters today, health care affects everyone in this room. The United States is going towards socialized medicine. Countries across the world that have socialized medicine are trying to figure out a way to get out of it. So we need people in the state senate and in the general assembly that understand health care and there's not a human being in this room that understands health care better than me. They may understand it as well, but they don't understand it better because I've spent my entire career in the medical field with a global pharmaceutical company, um, <clears throat> with insurance, and now the president and CEO of a medical services company. So we need someone that not only is willing to say no to the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare, but that understands that we still need a safety net for some people in our society, but we need a safety net to help people and not create this, this, perpetual, uh, uh, this perpetual addiction to social services, and we need people that understand health care. Third thing is education. That's the largest portion of the state budget. I have five kids, all in public school. Um, I understand education. I understand um, the challenges that our teachers go through. Um, our teachers are tired of changing based on political wins. And here's, here's sort of my take on this, and I'll try to wrap it up. Um, I do have to go. I, 
my wife is out of town with our daughter. I have two kids that go to uh, Hayhire Middle School. My 14-year-old son plays football, and my 13-year-old uh, daughter plays soccer, but she also plays travel soccer, so she's in Atlanta uh, on a travel team. So I've got my 14-year-old son babysitting his 10-year-old brother and 8-year-old brother, so I'm afraid that when I get home, the dog's going to be duct taped to the mailbox. You know, It may be on fire now. I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked outside, but the place is probably burnt to the ground now. But um, I promised them I'd take them out to dinner, and if they would not kill each other, then I would take them out to dinner. But, but um, regarding education, you know, I, I own a medical services company. If I need advice, I go to the medical community. The way that we've approached education, it would be like electricians advising doctors on how to do their job. Everyone's telling the teachers what they should do, and no one's asking the teachers what they think. Here are the people that need to be making decisions about education. Public and private teachers. Public and private parents. Parents need to be at the table. These are my kids. These aren't the state's kids. These are my kids. I, I determine how my kids are educated. So I need to be at the table. Homeschool parents. Let's find out what the private sector is doing well, and let's transfer that to the public sector. But let's ask the people that have the most at stake in education. That's parents, that's teachers, that's administrators, that's homeschool parents, that's private educators and private parents. And let's figure out how to fix the education system in Georgia. Let's just don't say no to Common Core. I think Common Core needs to be abolished. Let's don't just say no to something. Just saying no is not leading. You need to find out what the solutions are. And I think that the solutions to education are trapped in the minds of parents and teachers and administrators. I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of things that I want to accomplish as a state senator. Um, if, you, um, if you want to, go to richardrains.com. Um, look at the various issues that I'm passionate about. But there's a contact tab on there. Click on that contact tab. Leave me an email. Tell me what's important to you. Because this is an opportunity not just for me to talk, but for me to listen. One other thing, there's one thing we're doing in this campaign that I'm very proud of and that um, win or lose, we are winning with something that we're doing in this campaign. <clears throat> We've made our campaign available to uh, high school juniors and seniors mm -hmm. in the seven counties that this state senate represents and we have 22 interns from the seven counties that um, represent Senate District 8 and what these, um, what these high school interns are doing is, is is we meet and we talk about government and we talk about um, what a state senator does, what the General Assembly does, so it's an opportunity for me to mentor these 22 students, but it's also an opportunity for these students to get involved in a political campaign. The only way that they, that they can volunteer for my campaign is if they and their parents sit down, go over the website, go over my material, call me on the phone and ask questions, and if the parents and the kid say, you know what, he's somebody I can vote for, then they can serve as an intern for my campaign. And so we've got these 22 high school students and, and six college students that are interning for our campaign that are, that are doing all the, the different things that you can imagine an intern doing with phone calls and meet and greets and, and things like that. But what we are trying to do with this campaign, because I believe campaigns are about ideas. They're not personality contests. I, uh, contest. I don't dislike either John or Ellis. We're friends and we'll be friends when this is over. It's not a personality contest and it's not a beauty contest. For goodness sakes, I'm glad it's not a beauty contest. But, but this is about ideas. And I think I have better ideas because I've surrounded myself with people that have better ideas. My name is Richard Raines. I'm running for state senate. And I would like for you to vote for me. And if you're still unsure, I'd like for you to go to my website, richardraines.com. Click on the contact tab, send me an email, and let's have a conversation about it. Now, I'm going to go, and I'm going to let Mr. Page tell you just how horrible a person I am. No, he's not going to do that. But I'm going to go make sure my house isn't burned down. Thank you. I appreciate it.